NASCAR, guys. We're in NASCAR DFS series, Osmo.com. We're talking some short tracks. Now, the key thing about short tracks is they have a lot more laps. So you have races in NASCAR that are like 500 laps, and that has a ton of laps led, a ton of fastest lap points. So we end up getting some crazy NASCAR DFS scores. What is the key feature of these short tracks? Like you said, these short tracks, because they are shorter in length, it allows for NASCAR to run more laps at them. We're talking 300 on the short end at a at a venue like New Hampshire or Phoenix. Then you go all the way up to 500 laps, like if it was Martinsville or Bristol. So naturally, if you are increasing the amount of laps, you're increasing the amount of laps led and fastest lap bonus points that are going to be awarded. So we see these scores grow in grow just incrementally as the as the amount of laps goes on with the race um because these point scores are so are so big our emphasis on dominators becomes that much more important because it's these dominators the guys that are leading the multitude of laps that are getting fastest laps while they're out in front their their scores become so big approaching 150 even 200 points that they they become so essential to the core of your lineups I would say you want at least two to three dominators in a short track because of how many points those make up. And only about half the field has any potential to get dominator points, I'd say. Right. So one thing um, about the short tracks is guys can fall behind laps really fast because these tracks, sometimes they're like 30 seconds uh, around. So I've noticed that the favorites – betting wise are a lot more likely to win at short tracks and underdogs are a lot less likely to win so would you say that it's the less of an even playing field on a short track definitely like you said sometimes these tracks take 30 seconds if you go to bristol it only takes 15 seconds to get a, get around the get around the track when the leaders are getting around the track that quickly it just increases the chances that if you're a driver starting in the back, that that leader is going to get to you quicker and perhaps put you a lap down. And that is a, a bit of a, of a death blow to these drivers in the back, that if they get a lap or even multiple laps down, it puts them in a hole so big that it, it, it's tough for them to get out of it. And it kills their fantasy upside for the rest of the night. They need a multitude of circumstances to help get them out of that hole and then to work their way forward. Definitely. With these second and third tier teams, you're hoping for like a late restart that kind of evens the playing field a little bit. If they're a lap down, they don't get that opportunity. So that's that's key. These are a lot of fun because you can rack up big fantasy scores. Uh, so uh, make sure to tune in to the rest of our NASCAR DFS strategy series here. We'll be talking about all the important factors for NASCAR DFS.